Hello, my friend. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Talk Power English Class. Practice English is important for learning English. Today in this video, I'm going to tell you how to practice English at home when you are alone. Practice English with yourself is a good way to improve your English speaking. So listen, today I am going to give you lots of ideas about how to practice speaking English when you are alone at home. Home alone? Sounds like a film. Are you ready? Let's do it. Hello. And if you don't know me, my name is Adam. I run the Talk Power English Class YouTube channel. So listen. Today we're going to be looking at how to practice speaking English when you are alone at home. It's not so easy for many people, right? Because maybe you don't have any native English speakers in your city. Maybe there are no tourists that you can go and harass. Maybe there are no groups where you can locally, where you can go and chat and do English, speak English. And maybe you're not ready to go on Skype and try and find some random English person to chat with, somebody you don't know. I mean, that can be quite hard, especially if you're a little bit shy like me. So what I want to do today is share with you lots of ideas about how you can practice speaking when you're on your own at home alone. Right. Good. Now, if you do know me, you may be thinking, what's that strange orange block over there? That wasn't there before. True, and it's, this is my meditating mat. Sometimes where I sit and meditate sometimes, I don't sit on the wall. I'm just tidying at the moment, so I couldn't find a place to put it, so right now it's over there. Okay. The truth about speaking is that, yes, you can watch videos, you can watch films, you can listen to podcasts, all of that is great. But at some point, you need to start speaking, and you can speak on bit like writing your diary at the end of the day, right? Which is also a great way to practice writing, but this is speaking in front of the mirror. It's nice. It's reflective learning in many ways. Okay, moving on. The next one I call collocation fun, right? Collocations are words that are often used together, right? Like we talk about heavy rain. Heavy rain in English. We don't say big rain. Today, there's big rain. No, there is heavy rain. So these are collocations. Collocation fun is where we're going to practice speaking. Using a very common teaching method from really based on the task-based approach to teaching. And it's based on prepare, practice, present. So we'll be preparing the words, the collocations, practicing sentences, and then presenting a whole talk. Okay. Now, the reason I suggest doing this in front of the mirror is that actually there are great benefits of talking to a mirror, right? First of all, mirrors don't answer back like young children or wives. But apart from that, right? When you're speaking in the mirror, you can look at your mouth and you can see the kind of movements that you're making, which is great, right? It's useful for pronunciation. You can also check your body language. You may be surprised to see that you speak like that without ever moving your arms or that you suddenly realize that I'm doing this all the time. That's fine, but it's being aware of your body language can be quite good. And also, you feel like you're talking to someone, right? Many people I know, and this happened to me, right? I practiced for a long time with a book. And when I went to speak to somebody in the foreign language, it was like a shock seeing this face in front of me. Oh, my God. But practicing with the mirror, you've got used to a face in front of you, right? 
so it does help. So let's look then. Prepare, practice, and present. Preparing. What I suggest you do here is you take a topic, right? A recent topic. We were studying in the live lessons was science, right? And then get some collocations. You can use your course book. If you want, you can get onto the internet. You can go to this rather nifty little website, this one called Keith Speaking Academy, and in here, right, you have got free live lessons. You can go through to the free live lessons, and there is a recent one on science. So you can just download, right? Download the document. Yeah, we want to download that. And then find in there all the collocations. Look, you've got the notes here. And here you've got collocations, you've got idioms, you've got loads of stuff. And what I would do is, I would take maybe six or seven collocations or idioms, like exact science, it's not rocket science, to be on the same wavelength. And that's the preparation, right? That's step one. Step two is in front of the mirror, just make a sentence with it, right? Exact science. Well, parenting bringing up children is not an exact science. Cooking is not an exact science. Frying an egg, it's not rocket science, it's actually quite easy, right? And then, I'm just practicing sentences here, and then in the end, after practice, present. I take one of the old part two questions around science. Maybe something like, describe an area of science you're interested, and then start to talk about it for maybe a minute and trying, if possible, to use some of these phrases and sentences, right? So you may say something like this. Describe an area of science you're interested in. Well, okay. I guess an area I'm interested in, actually, is cooking. And I know it's not an exact science, but I guess it's a branch of science, a branch of food science, maybe, right? And I am interested in the science behind cooking. I think it's very interesting. I know with cooking, when you heat things up, they change, and when you mix different things, like sugar and vinegar, you get different levels of acidity and going to explain how it works. You can find that out once you kind of sign up for free. But basically, there's a library. You choose your level here. So let's say I'm going to go intermediate, and you can choose down here different audios to listen to. I've got one of my previous lessons here about sport that I will open up. And let me just show you briefly how it works. We'll just focus on the bit on the left, okay? Okay, let's try. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Steve. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. So what I want you to focus on first is as you listen to the sentence, pick out the stressed words. Nice to see you. Nice. See. You. Like to chat a bit about your interest in sports. Chat. Interest. Sports. So I'm just repeating the stressed words. Chat. Interest. Sports. Sure. You lived in Japan for quite a few years. I think, lived, Japan, years, I think, right about nine years, nine years, okay, so you can see, I'm just doing the word stress, and also, you can also pick out chunks or phrases that you like or that sound interesting, and I think you lived in different cities, that's right, I lived in Sendai for four years, which is a little bit north of Tokyo, a little bit north, a little bit north, that's interesting, which is a little bit north, right? Not in the north, not located in the north, is a little bit north of. Nice. Tokyo for four years, and then one year down south in Shikoku. Down south, interesting, not in the south, 
down south. Okay. And did you play any sports when you were in Japan? A little bit. A little bit. I love that. A little bit. A little bit. Played a little bit of soccer. I played a little bit of soccer. A little bit of soccer. Isn't that great? So you can see I'm picking out either the stressed words or little phrases or chunks that I like. And this is really helping us listen and prepare for speaking. Next, what you'll do after you've finished. If you want, you can check the tape script as you listen again. That's fine. But at the end, what I would like you to try and do is try to repeat the audio or the lesson, giving a summary. So repeating it with your words, not reading, not listening. In fact, you can just close that and focus on your own words, right? Oops. And then after you've done that and you've done a bit of practice, you could then try to retell the lesson or the story and record yourself. If you're not sure, you can use your There's Mobile apps to record your voice. There's Volcaroo, which is also a very simple online voice recorder. And recording yourself is great because it puts pressure on you. And that my friend is good. Also, you can then, once you've listened back, go and compare to the original lesson or story with the tape script and see if it's different. Did you make a mistake? Instead of saying a little bit of football, did you say a little bit football? Or did you use different collocations, right? Instead of individualized sports, did you say personal sports? Something different. That noticing, again, puts pressure on you, which is great, and it also helps you notice. A noticing language is a kind of feedback, which is essential to improve. So that's it. Practice with short audios. Right, the next one is really fun. And it's about imitating your favorite English-speaking actor or actress. Okay. So here, when you watch a film in English, take some of the actors that you really like and pretend to be them, right? So you're copying their body language, their gestures, their facial expressions, their accent, their voice, their words. You're copying everything. Why does this work? Because it's all about identity. A key part of language learning is your identity as an English speaker. And as students, we often have a mask, or we can create a mask that we hide behind when we speak a foreign language. And this can be very, very helpful to reduce anxiety or stress, especially if you're shy and, or you don't want to where the pressure is there. You have time to prepare to think about what you're going to say to record it, and if you don't like it, delete it, record it again. But it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's just about practice. Not perfection, practice. So sending audio messages is a great way to do it. Next up, imitate the English foreigner. Now, I'm sure most people can imagine or know how English people speak your language, right? If you've got tourists or you've met people from other countries who speak your language, how do the English people speak your language, right? Take that sound, that accent, and start to use it. So, for example, let's imagine I'm Spanish. Speaking Spanish, right? And I'm thinking, so how do English people speak Spanish, right? They don't speak perfectly. Speaking Spanish, they speak with an English accent, right? Speaking Spanish. So, the Spanish person would try and speak Spanish with the English accent. Speaking Spanish, right? And then switch to English but keep that accent. Speaking Spanish. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Can you hear that? 
that the same pronunciation and accent is easy to switch and suddenly my English sounds English. It sounds great. Right. That's it. I'm doing an example with Spanish, but you could do it with any other language, right? Think how English people speak your language. Speak your language with that accent and then switch to English keeping that British accent or English accent or American accent. It really can be quite, quite useful and fun to boot. Great. Now the next idea is shadowing. Of course, a shadow, right? If the sun is shining down on the floor behind you, you have a shape the same as you, right? Dark. That's your shadow. The sun leaves a shadow. You leave a shadow. And to shadow someone is to follow somebody. So, if I shadow you, it means I'm following you. Sometimes detectives will shadow suspicious people, right? Now, in language, when we shadow somebody, it can be just to repeat them, but you're very close behind them, right? Remember, wherever you go, your shadow follows very closely. So here, the thing to do is to find a short audio and to listen for maybe a minute and to repeat almost on top of the voice, but maybe a fraction of a second behind them. So you're just behind them, but you are really following them very, very closely. Do not wait for the sentence to finish and then repeat. This is different. This is being really close behind them, and it forces you to pick up on word stress and intonation, and if you focus on those two things, it really can help build up that speaking skill, word stress and intonation. Let me kind of demonstrate. So we've taken from Culips or Culips a little audio. First of all, I recommend you listen to the minute completely so you've got an idea of what it's about. And I've already done that because I'm well prepared. And then second time, you listen and shadow. Let me show you how close we are behind it. I'm going to use my phone so you can hear properly. So Jeremy, let's get into it. Talk about how to talk about pots how to talk about movies and music and the kind of artwork that enriches our lives. This topic was suggested to us by one of our listeners, and she sends us email, which I will read for everybody. Now it says, Unintelligible. Okay. I think you get the idea, right? So it's different from wait, listen, and repeat. It's shadowing following closely. At first it's very hard, but the more you do it, the more you'll be noticing word stress, intonation, even accent. I noticed I was picking up a Canadian accent about it's all about. Right, that is shadowing. Let's move on. So we've had shadowing, right? Now we're going to look at responding. What is responding? Well, Put very, very simply, responding is, you hear a question, you get an idea, you give an answer, you respond. The two called responding, right? Responding Cities Part 1 and Part 3. And what I've done here is I've recorded several questions with a gap for you to answer. And then the next question. So if you go into, for example, the part one and you press the shuffle button, the questions come at you in a random order and it works a bit like this. I mean, let me just play it for you and you'll see. Let's press shuffle and it plays automatically. Do you like your hometown? Oh, that's a good question. Do I like my hometown? Yeah. I think my hometown, Manchester, which is up in the north of England, is a very attractive place. There's lots of restaurants and shops. It does attract quite a few tourists as well, and they often come in to see the industrial landscape or the football pitches. 
We have a famous football team called Manchester United and Manchester. Do tourists like to visit your hometown? Yeah, there are quite a lot of tourists who come to visit my hometown. So, you see what's happening, right? It's just automatically asking me the next question, and I practice responding. Because I don't know what the questions are, because it's shuffle, random. So, you can practice that. You can also make your own, right? Set up your own YouTube channel. Don't worry about people finding it. They rarely do, and you just put some questions up with a gap for the answer, and then shuffle and bobs your uncle. Fantastic. That's it. The next suggestion is, describe what you are doing. And I know a lot of teachers suggest this as a way of thinking in English, right? So when you're out and about, out and about, when you're out and about maybe in the park and you're seeing different things, you describe what you see. Now I suggest you start with words, right? So there you are out and about in the park and you see, oh, bicycle, person, path, trees, bag, woman, phone, and you're using words, right? And then, right? As you're walking around the park, you make collocations, little chunks of language, right? Riding a bike, a long path, a cluster of trees, the woman glued to her phone, picnic, having a picnic maybe, right? And then you go on to make sentences, okay? This is a bit like that we mentioned earlier, the prepare, practice, present. So you're going from words to collocation to sentences, right? Oh, there's a man strolling in the park. There's a woman riding a bike. And also there are lots of trees. There's a woman glued to her phone and she looks like she's about to have a picnic. And you go on and on and on, right? Great. You can do it in any context. You can do it at home or when you're out, at the shops, wherever. Now, you may think and you may say, yeah, but Keith, you can't go around the streets talking to yourself. People think you're mad. Well, yes and no, right? Nowadays, put these on, right? Nowadays, people walk around and they're on the phone and like, hello? Yeah, John, yeah, yeah. I'm in the park, actually. Yeah, it's lovely. There's a man strolling over there. There's a woman riding a bicycle. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Right? That's perfectly normal to be talking to yourself in the streets, right? And if you're not comfortable with that, you can pretend that you're Johnny English, right? Pretend you're a spy. Hello. Yes, there's a man walking along a path. There's a woman riding a bicycle, and I think there's a woman glued to her phone, and she's about to have a picnic. Call in the police. Get Johnny English. Pretend to be a spy. I don't know. It's very, very normal, but the key speak out and go from words to collocation to sentences. Great practice. You can do it at home as well. I mean... I'm talking about getting some fresh air. Nowadays, that's not so easy, right? In fact, if you've got a little mask, you could speak behind your mask to try and they help you focus on specific sounds and they're fun. The idea is to repeat the sounds or the riddle, if you like, three or four times until you get more fluent with it. And basically, it's a bit like a gym workout for your mouth because, again, one of the really important things about speaking is in English. You're using different muscles from your own language, and very often you're not practicing those muscles enough. Tongue twisters are a great way to do it. For example, right, the ragged rascal ran round the ragged rock. 
Good for your R's, right? Try it two or three times. The ragged rascal ran round the ragged rock. The ragged rascal ran round the ragged rock. The ragged rascal ran round the ragged rock or sea. I can't even say she. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells sheep. She sells seashells on the seashore. It's better if you don't read it because then you're focusing on the right sounds. But that's the S and the S. It's really good. You can make up your own, right? Find the, the consonants or the vowels that you struggle with. Make them up. It's mainly consonants, actually. Peter Piper picked a pick, a peck of pickle pepper. You could just say, well, Peter picked a plump plum. Peter picked a plump plum, right? Make it up. Great way to practice. Really good for pronunciation. Next, practice idioms with Youglish. Now, Youglish is an amazing website. It's very, very simple to use. It's basically like YouTube, but with clips. So you can take any phrase, and I think about idioms here, you input the idiom, and it gives you lots of video clips using that idiom, and you just practice. So you can imitate the intonation, the sound. You can get some context for the idiom, which always helps, right? And it's a really, really effective way to do it. Let's have a look how it works. This is Youglish. You put in basically a word or an expression. Let's take, for example, an idiom. I don't know if you know this one. Pull your socks up. Which basically means to do better, to work harder, to do better. So to work harder to improve your performance, if you like, you need to pull your socks up. My teacher at school would always say, Come on, Mr. O'Hare, it's time to pull your socks up. So if we want to see this in different contexts, so he's been told, Come on, pull socks up, move. That was so fast. Let's move to the next one. We're given eight clips here. The next one. You had to pull your socks up. You had to pull your socks up, American. Right? You had to pull your socks up. So you can hear and just, it's nice for repetition and also context, which helps you. That was how you got your network by improving. Right? That was how you got your network. So you can move on, try another one. At a moment like this, pull up your socks. At a moment like this, pull up your socks. Pull yourself together and put down the phone. Pull yourself together and put down the phone. Right. So, again, you can see the words. You can rewind. At a moment like this, you can control the sound and you can check different examples by just clicking onto the next one. Okay? Pull up your own socks. Pull up your own socks. Thank you very much, sir. Right. That's it. That's you, Glish. So that's it. You can use it for vocabulary, but I like it for idioms because that's often the difficult thing that a lot of students find to use naturally. So any work you can do on idiom practice is going to help. Great. Let's move on. Right? Okay, Doki. Next up, immerse yourself in English. Immerse. Surround yourself in English. I think it's well known through research that the more you can be immersed in English, the more you're going to learn. I suggest you do a lifestyle audit. An audit is like a check or a checklist, right? So where do you use English? And where do you use your mother tongue? So think about when you're using your phone. Using your week. I mean that. You can't go wrong, and once you've done that, then you step it up and you make it more challenging. Okay? So do yourself a favor. Set yourself up to win, and on the point of goals, there's going to be a day where you're just too tired and fed up, and you don't want to do it. 
right? There's a little trick, which is, it's called the one-minute trick, right? So you thinking, today, I've said I'm going to speak for ten minutes, right? But I just can't. Oh, I've got the baby screaming. I've got to prepare dinner. I've got this to do and that to do. I just don't... can't do it, right? The one-minute trick is you say to yourself, Okay, I'm just going to take one minute to practice. So instead of ten, today I do one minute. But I don't stop. I don't say I'm not going to do it. I still do it, but just one minute. And try that. What often happens is after a minute, once you've started, you think, I might as well do another couple of minutes now that I've started. And actually, you often end up doing ten. But the one-minute trick is really powerful. So check it out. Next habits. If possible, when you've got your goals and your speaking practice, try and do the same place at the same time every day. It helps build a habit. And also, if you have a cue, right? That is the same. That indicates I'm going to do it. The cue could be a time, right? Eleven o'clock every morning, that's my English time. Boom. When I brush my teeth in the morning, remember? In front of the mirror, that's my English time. Two minutes just speaking about what I'm going to do. Have that cue, same place, same time every day makes it much more easier. No, much easier. Classic, native speaker mistake. So that's all about habits. Finally, you thought we would never arrive at the end, right? The last piece of advice is to join a community. Because often when you're speaking alone, it can be a lonely experience, right? So even though your practice is alone at home, having some kind of contact with the community, even if it's reading, writing, typing, can be very motivating. So there are lots of Facebook groups. I mean, I have one but you can choose any Facebook group. If you want to find out mine, link below, but being a part of a community can really help just motivate you. Even if you're not speaking, you can speak in my community. Some people record themselves. Great. But you can practice at home on your own, but just having people you're sharing your learning with is very powerful. That is it. All of these, I hope, interesting, useful, and great ideas for you. Great. So there are lots of ideas there. I hope you can take some of these and start practicing speaking when you're at home alone. I think it's all a question of confidence, right? The more you speak, the more confident you get, and the more ready you are for your IELTS speaking test. Also. I hope if you practice these, you can be ready to move up to the next step, because I do think it's also important to interact with people, and maybe this can help you get ready to find a speaking partner or speak with a friend in English, or even find a teacher, where you can go and practice more and more. Whichever way you go, enjoy it, and have fun with English as well. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.